This is Red Moon role-playing. I frown a little, looking around the dark, creepy tunnels myself, and I just say, Okay, don't get... Don't get distracted, Doctor. We, we have a job to do. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying you didn't see anything. Um, I kind of find myself clutching the dagger at my chest for a moment in the coat. But it's possible things might be trying to mess with you mentally, and uh, you, you shouldn't let them. Um, we should focus on what we're doing and get out of this place. Don't get me wrong, another time we can come and... I have to admit, this is, these are very strange tunnels. I didn't know there were so many down here. There's just so much to explore. I... But, yes, we'll we'll come back to it. We'll come back... Come back to that. That place. You know, and I start walking again in the direction that we are going. I was thinking that uh, perhaps it would be possible to somehow replicate... And I start talking to you about what happened in nature and that place and going back there again somehow as well. How to explore these places that apparently exist in some sort of pockets of our reality. Well, there certainly might be, but I mean, you need to be very careful, Doctor. You're not really supposed to do that. There's, there's a reason. Uh, <laughs> you want to be a happy individual, that is. <laughs> Yeah, of course, of course. Anyone anyone who hasn't seen it or hasn't remembered it as clearly, as vividly as you and I, they would think we were uh, crazy. So you, we'll I'll keep this keep this to ourselves, yeah? Keep this to ourselves. And uh, I nod, and I feel a little worried for Dr. Christensen, considering he was such a rational man. There's a reason these things need to be protected. And often it's so they're not used, or that certain things aren't done. Uh, people trying to open portals to hell, like in TV shows. Well, obviously that's not how it works, but it's still something that is a bad thing, regardless of whether you can do it or not. So I smile and nod and say, "Okay, Doctor, just, just, let's just let's just focus on getting. Remember the specimen? We, we need to get in there, and then that we can dis- let's discuss this again over a nice <laughs> cup of." tea or a whiskey l- later. Yes, 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 of course. No, not, we're dropping it. There's, there's no discussion. We're dropping it right now. Yes. I've got everything I need. We're going to find that and get that sorted. And it's some way, somewhere in my mind, I, I know how important that is. That has always, oh, for a long time now, been the most important thing. I suppose even ever since I got the idea of the project and my daughter was suffering and me possibly being able to alleviate all that that has been my life my focus but what if there's even bigger things out there no yes yes but just like that you need to uphold an image of who you are of of the real what people believe is real and this goes a bit round and round in my head and I'm not completely present as we keep going, though, I treat, try to move in the right way. Yes, you are moving in the right way. You walk for maybe five, ten minutes or so. You Surely you must be somewhere underneath the campus now. It says College of Business, Langton Hall, Dixon Recreation Center, Weatherford Hall. There's a sign towards Weatherford Hall. There we go here. This is it. Look at that. All right. I suppose we should be quite close now. Are you Are you ready? I am. Let's get going. <laughs> Let's go. You get to what looks to be stairs going up Weatherford Hall. There's graffiti here. Old by the looks of it. Someone has been down here at some point, but it's been a long time. Eat my shorts. Bart Simpson with sunglasses. 90s. Man, the 90s were... They were wild. There's old cigarette butts and bottles of Everclear and beer. Hmm. Nintendo. The Simpsons game. That was so hard. Nothing like what my daughters are playing now. I just say that. Oh, uh, I'll take your word for it. Didn't have many 
didn't really have that sort of thing when I was a kid. My father uh, didn't believe in video games. Or computers, for that matter. <laughs> oh, yeah. You seem to be on, on the more analog side of things. Served you well, though. Well, thank you. No, it has. Right, so... I guess we're here. I hate to say it, though. I think we're going to have to take a risk and talk to at least some of these kids, because otherwise how are we going to have any idea where your thing is? I mean, we, we can't be searching the entire building room by room, can we? No, no, it's, uh, it's, it's supposedly come from one of the, the dorms, that's what it said. Right, oh, okay, that's a, get, which dorm? Weatherford Hall is a, basically a, a dorm, um, it is featuring a lot of student housing inside of it, so somewhere in there it was from the ground floor so if that's where you come out from when you go up these stairs then you should be where you need to be it should be around here now right one other thing doctor uh i lean in i'm thinking just in case we do have to chat with any of the colorful uh students around here uh maybe we should have a bit of a story uh i was thinking maybe i don't know maybe you could be looking after a niece or something, we were concerned, we want to make sure she's okay, we support the cause, whatever the cause is. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. Um, it's, uh, your, uh, your niece, and, uh, we were just gonna bring them some food, or something, maybe. Yeah, yeah. good Hold idea, out. good okay. idea, yeah, just in yeah. case, because... You, you never know; these types might get a bit angry. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 all well, this is a bit very surreal. I don't remember this sort of thing happening when I went to uni. Yeah, no, uh, no. And I'm again a little bit distracted because I'm looking around and I'm trying to think that in a place like this, where could you possibly store a, a living, a, a, an ape, a monkey? That's like this. Would it have been downstairs? Would it have been in that basement somewhere? And I feel like I'm not completely sure what we're looking for right now. I turn to Coleman again and I say, Look, so what I really need to find is my material, my things. I can't just be stored anywhere and we... I'm not sure talking to people around here will... Uh... But that would be if, if they'd seen something strange, like something being, uh, I don't know, or heard strange noises, like animal noises or some such. Some, anything strange, I suppose, we could ask about. But, well, it works from the first floor. Let's, let's go up there on a hunch, I guess. I'm just... All right, well, let's keep our eyes out and have a think. And I'll start moving ahead a little, and I suppose I'd like to try and observe the situation. He does seem to want to not interact with people. He might be right, so let's see if I can just see anything that gives any clues. Maybe, as he said, a bigger room or a storage closet. I, I don't understand exactly what we're looking for, but he's made, made it sound like it's something a bit bigger than a suitcase. So, a bigger room, maybe. Or, or even maybe an area where there's maybe public printers or something. You'd have to first get up those stairs and actually get into Weatherford Hall itself. You are still in this tunnel system. So if you go upstairs, you will notice that there is a door here. And when you're trying to open it, it there's some resistance. It seems like someone has put some stuff in front of it. You're going to have to try to push it open. But there's two of you, so if you work together, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Might make some noise, oh. though. Okay, well, let's try and do this nice and quietly then. Don't want to make too much noise. I'll uh, take the left and you uh, help, or do you want to take the lead? It shouldn't be too heavy. Yeah. Uh, sure, I'll help. You can roll for observe the situation now, and, and we can see what uh, how, how we take this thing. That's a 16 on my end, so I'll add 2. I rolled a 12, plus 1, plus 2 is 15. Yes. What would you like to ask? You are able to get this debris that's in front of the door pushed away quite easily, and you are in some kind of uh, storage closet of, of some kind. You 
you see that the door that you come out of uh, is marked shelter. And when you get up here, you hear the sound of music very, very loud. There's some kind of party going on here. Of course there is. You smell the pot smoke from all the way from over here. It's, it's to be expected, especially if the adults are, are not longer here. Makes sense to me. All right, I'll lean forward a little, open a door, just peek my head out. Question number one, what's the best way through this? I think for the moment I agree with Dr. Christensen. Let's see if we can avoid people if we can, so let's focus on that. What's the best way getting forwards and not drawing too much attention or meeting any people just yet? It is a, a fairly cold time of the year after all, so quite a lot of people are wearing jackets. You would assume that people are sometimes heading out to have a smoke. Some people seem to be smoking inside as well, but yeah, so you wearing your coats and kind of covering up with that and, and not trying to show the fact that you are both, well, somewhat older gentlemen, you think if you can do that, you might be able to, to get through this without drawing too much attention to yourselves. There's a lot of people here. You see, you see students milling around, you know, red solo cups, the whole thing, you know, the world changes in all kinds of ways, but certain things stay the same. And, 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 and this is very much one of those college parties, just like in the movies. Oh, wonderful. Noisy as well, which could be helpful for us. All right, I nod to the doctor and say, Okay, doctor, pull your hat down a little. Let's just pretend we're at a party. I mean, I can do that. You can do that, right? <laughs> I just nod to you and I... Yeah, I try to... Uh, just move a little bit like, okay, like I had a few drinks or something and... Uh, uh, and try to blend in without showing my face because it's obvious that I'm, well, not, not the right age group hmm. for this place. And as I lead the doctor out and we start doing our best just to mill through, I guess now we can probably see lots of students partying. What is being hidden from me is my second question. Because now I want to find, well, where do we go? Obviously not here. They're not going to have... <laughs> stolen property right in front of all these people you'd think it's probably going to be hidden somewhere what's the floor layout like are there any stairs going up or down anywhere that looks like a storage area or a laundry room where is this thing it's clearly being hidden from us where could it be you rolled so well that as you're moving through this crowd of students you overhear a conversation that's a fucking monkey, man. He's got a fucking monkey in his room. Ah, it's not even the craziest thing I've seen these last few days. Yeah, they seem to be talking about someone who has a monkey in their room. I whisper to Christensen. You hear that? A uh, short thing, a monkey? That must be it. That must be it. That can't be anything else. Uh, okay. I try to calm myself again so close I can't this is incredible and I get angry at the same time so I, I try to just calm myself for a bit as Coleman's listening I try and pat Christian on the shoulder and just lean in just a little can we maybe get a room number from these people let's just listen a little longer you seem to uh, catch that, that yeah there's someone called Huntsman and he seems to be somewhere on this floor the guy who was pointing in in that direction, down the hall there, when he was saying the name Huntsman, perhaps that's where the room is, down that hall? That might be a lead. I subtly try and just bob my head in that direction to Christiansen and just say, come on. I nod and uh, I follow. I feel angry, I feel agitated. We're doing this now. And I start to try to casually just look in the bag to see that I have the tranquilizer ready and the harness. I can do this as quickly as possible. You uh, you check and you you feel your phone vibrating. Okay, I'll I'll just uh, take lift that up to see what it is. It's Mikhail. Uh okay, it's not the best of time. But uh, I'll, I'll just take it and I'll try to keep it low. Like, hey, hey, sweetheart, 
Jermaine, oh, I think. Caden's heart, it's just stopped again. They had to resuscitate her. The, the doctors, they, they, they don't think that she has a lot of time left. We, we have to do something. I, okay, listen. Where are you? Is, is that music? I, are you drinking? Sorry, no, I'm, I, have to, I have to go through, uh, it's a protest. A lot of, lots of people making lots of noise. Uh, that's all. L- listen, I, I think I might, I might have the, the heart. I might have what we need. You do? Yeah, I, w- What should I do? Well, I, see what the f- they say. I I know they'll not want to let her go, of course, uh, but it could be that that I could save her myself if we just get her home, okay? I'll see what I can do. There's so many patients here. Uh, they, they might not complain too much if if she stabilizes. I'll, I'll see what I can do. All right, honey? If she stabilizes, yes. Uh, yeah, that'll be the first, first point, of course. Uh, see what they do. If it turns critical... Then call me again, okay? I'll try and get there as soon as I can. I will. Or home. Um, that even better. Uh, I love you. And, and she hangs I up. I love you too. <sighs> I look up. Where is it? Huntsman. There is a... Uh, there is a door. There is a name sign outside of it. it says Huntsman. That would be it. Okay, we gotta get in here. Uh, how are we gonna do that? Just see if it's unlocked. I'll try and push on the door. You do, and and it is, it is unlocked. It's a dorm party after all. People probably going back and forth between rooms. Okay, listen. If it's in there, if it's if it's loose, if it's free, it will react to seeing me. Okay, just. I've got something to, to calm it down with. Like, okay, I... So just just try and hold it for me, okay? Hold it? Uh, well, well, it's like... I kind of thought it was like a dead thing. You're telling me it's a live, mon- mon- a live monkey? Well, you, you can't... You, you can't use a heart from something dead. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not a doctor. Uh, sure. Yeah, all right. All right, let's go. Inside the room, it's it's a typical student room, really, but it's got a kind of streamer set up, you know, a green screen, there's multicolored LEDs. You see a balaclava on the table. There are sounds coming from the bathroom. There's a shower running. You know those sounds. Someone is having sex in there. And more importantly, the subject, the baboon, it's... There's a cage in the corner of the room. It screeches at you when it sees you. There are so many impressions here all at once. There's the music in the background. Them, someone having sex in the shower. And here, of course, is the whole scene set to make a video. I feel like I want to destroy all this. I want to destroy all evidence of what he has, what he used to to get me fired, to stop the whole thing. But the only thing that really matters is Cadence and the heart. That's the only thing that matters. If we just can get this thing and get out of here, this thing, it's just a thing. Yes. Well, the clock is ticking. We're not going to be going forever. You do have the, the sedative ready. It is in a cage. We've done this many times. You'll have to fight it a little bit, but it's not that big. You can handle it. Yeah, I've done that before. If I can get it from the cage, from outside the cage, that's the best. If not, Coleman will have to open it and hold it. I pause a little. This is a bit much. I look at this creature in this cage. How does it look to me? It's... You think they're called baboons, right? It's... It, it's, it's a... A monkey, you probably don't care so much about what, what kind it is. It looks scared. Like, very scared. 
and it seems to have reacted quite badly as you came in, but then again, it was probably just surprised. There couldn't be anything deeper behind, could there? No, that was just surprised. I'll try and whisper to it, like, hey, buddy, it, it, it's your friend the doctor. It's all all gonna be okay. He just, we're gonna take you home and nice and safe, <laughs> right? That's right, Billy. Come on, Billy. Gonna get you back. And I try to approach it, and I try to sedate it. Can you act under pressure, then, to do that? And, uh, Mr. Coleman, if you would like to assist, basically, in trying to hold it still, then you can. Well, I guess my st- I'd rather try to calm the creature, but I guess we don't have time. I- I'll try and hold the cage and assist. I roll a seven, so I cause unintended consequences. And I roll a two. This is too much. It's too much at bay. And it's so excited. It is. It is. It's very excited, and and, and you you feel that the syringe kind of ends up going where it's not really supposed to go, but it goes in, and and you're able to deliver the sedative, and and, and yes, you see it slumped together quite quickly. You delivered quite a significant dose. Well, it's not moving now, at least. That's good. That's that's great. All right, you can just take it out of the cage and go. Yeah, this is all. This is it. C- good work, Coleman. And, uh... I kind of feel nice. I didn't do anything, like I tried to hold it down, but I just backed off immediately. And then I say, wait, why are you taking it out of the cage? Surely being in the cage would be better. Uh, I've got a carrying harness, I say, and uh, like just on the side of my mouth as I'm trying to put it in it as efficiently as possible. Maybe like this, guy can even go just in the duffel bag. People will see me carrying a monkey around, but I'll, I'll just put it in this for safety reasons, and then. All right. Well, I guess we just gotta head straight back to that tunnel. Then we'll let's get out of here. Yes, and uh, fortunately. The person who had taken the baboon has quite a lot of stamina, so the act continues as you make your escape through the door, and you're back in the party hallways of Weatherford Hall. Now, however, you have a baboon with you in a duffel bag. What would you like to roll here? An act under pressure, or is there something else that you could try to sell as you try to now make your way back? It's going to You're going to be a little bit more suspicious this time. I would like to, if anyone comes over, try and use my natural charisma here, play off something like, Hey man, we've got some fun stuff in here. It's probably not very good, if I'm honest with you, but again, I've always been quite charismatic, so maybe I can get away with just sounding like a a stupid drug idiot. Mm Hmm. You will try to fellow kids the the students. Go ahead then and and roll for, uh, for charisma then. Yeah, and I roll an uh, 11, which means I can give you a plus one, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed, giving me a 12. You're making your way through the, the, the groups of partying students, and yeah, someone does stop you. It's uh, a group of girls. Hey, you the you must be the assistant professor. It's great that you joined us. Uh, what was your name again? Is it okay if I give you a code name or something? I kind of... I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> it's great to see you. <laughs> um, totally. Uh, no, I'll be honest with you, kids. Uh, I was just here to check in on someone, make sure they were okay. But And they are, but... Uh, well, I hope you enjoy the party. Uh, hey, 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 and I know I can't do too much. I quickly just reach into my pocket and take out two $50 bills. But I feel bad that I can't do more for you guys. Like, I support the cause, but... What what can I do other than maybe you could just use this money for something? I don't know. <laughs> Help you out. Awesome. And uh, yeah, they take your money. Thanks. You kids stay in school, but keep fighting, fighting, fight your truth. And and I'm hoping that as I'm saying all this, I've given Dr. Christensen a bit of a just get going. Indeed. You think you've at least bought yourself some, some time here. Someone might start to wonder, well, was that really the assistant professor? But the money might help. So yes, Dr. Christensen, what do you do? Yeah, I try and uh, smile and uh, don't say too much. Try to kind of keep myself hidden. Let him be the one that gets seen, if anyone. And uh, 
uh, excuse myself and, and, and start going toward that uh, shelter door. And you get there. And you move through the tunnels. And you find yourself back in the Alumni Center. It went surprisingly smoothly, all things considered. Dr. Christensen, you can do this. You have what you need in your home lab. You could attempt the surgery. It may be your daughter's last chance. You just have to extract the heart from the subject, stabilize it, and then you can do the surgery on your daughter. There's no way that this would be sanctioned by any other doctor. You haven't done any human trials. You'd have to do this by yourself if it's going to be done, and the fewer people that know about it, the better. As we emerge from the tunnels, I, 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 I breathe a sigh of relief and I give Dr. Christensen a firm pat on the back. God damn, we did it! Uh, we, we did it, Doctor! We got in there, you, you've got your uh, friends listen, and... Listen, she's uh, my daughter, she's in a critical state. It's... I, I might have to... I might have to try and, and do the surgery tonight. Oh, okay. Uh, do you need a lift somewhere? I could give you a lift, I guess. That would be helpful. If you could, uh, just take me home. Uh, I think uh, it'd be easier so I don't have to both drive and focus on this in case it wakes up. Of course. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll, let, let's do that. Let's get out of here now. Uh, again, well done. And I'll give you a lift home and good luck, I guess. Um, yes, of course. And I hurry outside to get back to our car and hopefully try and drive Dr. Christensen home. Yes, and you... You do that. And... When you come home, Dr. Christensen, you you see that Mikkel's car is back and there's lights on and the home. She must have... Well, she's come home at least. Perhaps, Perhaps she's been able to get Cadence back. Mr. Coleman, what what do you do? There's a message from Elizabeth asking, Hey, what's up? You wanna, you wanna meet up? I look at my phone. I say, sure. I look to Dr. Christensen, let him out the car, and I say, Doctor, uh, if there's anything else I can do, let me know. Um, but otherwise, well, good night. We should probably part ways. Uh, I, I guess I never saw you tonight and you never saw me. <laughs> no, of course. Thanks. I, I can't thank you enough, I say as I bustle out of the car with my, well, subject in tow. Uh, you, um, uh, let's talk, let's speak soon, okay? Of course, Doctor, and, uh, okay, good night. I close the door, I look to the house for a moment. I do think about what he just said. Surgery tonight, that sounds very... Risky. I hope he knows what he's doing, but I mean, he is a doctor, so of course he does. And well, he's got the the monkey, poor thing. It, it did look a little scared, but well, again, the doctor knows what he's doing. So maybe now it's time for me to leave him be. I've done my part. I've helped him. It was exciting, almost. And again, maybe we'll talk again soon. But I think I'd like to get back to well, safety now. It's the streets are a little unsafe, so. Let's drive back and see Elizabeth. I wish the doctor all the best. And, well, you, you get inside and and Mikkel has... She's brought Cadence back home. She She's holding her in, in her arms. Where, where, where should I put her? Did they manage to stabilize her? Yes, but... But it can happen again. It's, it's, it's really, it's bad. It's bad, Jermaine. Bring her up to, to the room. Are you sure that you know what you're doing? I've worked towards this the past many years. I know exactly what I'm doing. I trust you. All right, and she, and she helps. Well, she brings Cadence up to the lab. And you have this option not to do this. 
surgery. You you know what you need to do. You need to extract the heart, and then it's time for the surgery for your daughter. But the, the heart, getting that out, that's the first part. That is not a very easy procedure, but you have done it before. Will you proceed with this first step, or will you do something else? I will first check on Cadence. I'll stroke her hair, try to be gentle, calming myself by calming her. I talk to her in soft tones, saying, it's going to be all right. It's going to be fine now. Daddy's going to help you. I know, I know you weren't in the forest. You've been a very good girl, okay? You've been the perfect daughter. And then I go over to the, to the specimen. And I get everything ready, the gloves on, make sure it's still in a calm state. Um, well, subdued, I suppose, and uh, held enough that nothing will happen during the actual procedure. Yes, and it it goes so well. At first, you extract the heart, you you carefully place it in the machine that will keep it beating, and everything looks good. But then the warning sounds from the machine in the lab. The machine that keeps the heart going. There's a long beep coming from it. The heart has stopped beating. Mr. Coleman. At whose place are you, Elizabeth's or yours? I've gone back to Elizabeth's, of course. I was driving there, you know, again, making sure I don't run into any trouble on the roads. I feel good, actually. Everything went so well, and... It was almost like an adventure. I was a little worried for the doctor for a minute there, but he seemed to pull back, and I hope everything goes well. I mean, they shut the project down, but, I mean, obviously he's still a doctor at the hospital, so he'll have people helping him. I hope everything goes well. Maybe it will go so well the project will get back on track, and I can call some people and give him a hand, because this sort of life-saving surgery stuff, I mean, that would be a good thing to invest in. It would be a great thing to invest in, much better than mining. So I'm feeling actually quite good, and, and I briefly, as I pull up to her house, touch the dagger with my coat. I had completely forgotten I even had it on me. I didn't need you in the end, friend, but that's okay. We, we shouldn't overuse you. Also, it did occur to me just before getting to Elizabeth's, I should probably head back to mine very quickly, because, you know, wanted to drop off the gun and the coat and actually dress up nice when I go to see her. Yeah. Maybe I'll... But I did... I forgot the knife. I, I still have that on me. Hmm. Yes, it feels good to have that one with you, doesn't it? I mean, you need to keep it safe after all. It is the most important thing in the world. So you have it with you. But the other things you left behind, uh, the things that might upset Elizabeth, and, and you've dressed up so you look nice, and, and you're at her place, and what are the two of you doing? I think I'll be keen to ask about her day, and as we're doing that, maybe I will just check the news, because I'm curious about these riots and maybe we're talking about that i'm saying you won't believe the day i've had like this this is crazy i really hope i'd like to do something about it you know maybe i could do some sort of charity thing or or, or something to help people out because people are going crazy yeah and you do that and you're, you're you're playing with her hair and and then you hear an alarm that goes off could that be the fire alarm there's it's very very loud and elizabeth looks up as well panicked What's that? Is that your alarm? What, what alarm is that? It's something coming from the building itself, it seems. Not, it's not her phone or anything like that, no. Look out the window, the door. What's going on in the building? Looking out the window, you can't see much, but you hear... You hear sounds coming from the corridor. You hear banging. You hear a voice. A guttural voice. You hear many voices. Turn it off. And you hear Elizabeth screaming. And we make a final cut here to Dr. Christensen. 
You're holding the red embroidered piece of cloth that you found. You're going through a box of old children's clothes. You finally, you finally found it. That long sleeve shirt that Cadence wore. Yeah, she, she wore this. Maybe three years ago. Back when she was just a normal little girl. Before the issue with her heart had been found. That brings back the memories. It was a camping trip, wasn't there? When you thought that she'd gotten lost in the woods. When you couldn't find her. It was only for a few minutes. It wasn't long, but you know how it is to be a parent. You were panicked, of course. So you were so relieved when you found her. And she was fine. And you got home. And, and everything was like it always was. For a time. And then she wasn't fine anymore. And, and the issues with her heart was found. And she would never be fine again. Not unless you could fix her. And that heart is gone now. The one that you were supposed to use. It's dead. Perhaps something... Perhaps trying to sedate the specimen. Perhaps... Well, it didn't It didn't go so well, did it? Perhaps that's what did it. That option is now close to you. But... Jermaine, not all hope is lost. There is a heart... That could fix your cadence. It's... It's in that forest. You saw her. She was strong. She was... She was healthy. She was able to do things that your cadence couldn't. Your cadence is going to die. Soon. If you do not give her a new heart. But to do that you will have to take it. Or you could bring that cadence back. She could be the real one, after all. Perhaps the cadence in the forest is your real daughter. But that's not the cadence you've raised. You have no memories with her. But she did look a lot like her. In fact, exactly like her. What are you going to do, Dr. Christensen? I put the cloth back down. Yeah. It's out there. Her heart. She is out there. Whatever she is, whoever she is. I saw her. (laughs) It's funny how Coleman seemed to see someone that he thought he knew that was dead. It's not the same. It's not the same as my little girl. I'll know it when I see her. I'm going to find my way back there. Whatever it takes, I'm going to find my way back there. I I think I am sensitive to it now. I think something has changed. And I can maybe find these places that I couldn't find before. And when I do, when I find my way back, I'll be ready and I'll... I'll know. I'll know when I stand with her. If that is my real little girl or not. And I'll know only then what it is that I have to do. Yes. Mr. Coleman, you have no memory of what happened. Just that you activated your artifact. You called upon your watchers, and things went blank. There was fire. You... You were inhaling smoke. You are inhaling smoke. Elizabeth is on the floor. There are bodies on the floor. It's it's silent, just the, the alarm. Aside from that, the f- sound of fire. There's blood in her hair. What do you do? I crawl over to her... I checked myself, of course, at first. Am I okay? Am I injured? You're covered in blood, but it's not yours. I see. I, I, I go to her quickly. I, I, I try and gently touch her. Is she okay? Is she breathing? She's breathing. She's she's alive, but she's unconscious. Oh, thank God. We, 
I look around the flat. Bodies. Who are these bodies? Who are these people? You know who they are. Do they seem to be the people from the woods? Yes. Oh, no. Who are you people? What do you want with me? It doesn't matter, there's fire everywhere. I, I need to get her out. I, I attempt to grab Elizabeth and make for the exit. Uh, try and get to the fire exit of this building. You do. The strange thing is that there's no, there's no fire truck, no ambulance. The sound of the of the riots has grown louder, though. As you get down, you you see that it's spread here too. Now it's like a war zone. There are no signs. There are no no protest chants. It's. It's just violence. Just violence and hatred. Molotov cocktails being thrown. There's there's tear gas. There's there's rubber bullets. Possibly even real ones. Water cannons. It's just... It's like a war. And it's unclear what is trying to be achieved here. And who it is that's even protesting. I need to get her to somewhere safe. I need to get home. I need to get back to the house. That's... That's the only safe place. I can't believe this is happening to the city. This is... Insane! I, I I get her in the car, in the back seat, uh, and I just drive. I, I need to just get home as soon as possible. I need to get past all this and just get home. And again, the dagger. I just feel it. If I run into any trouble, it will protect me. I need... I, I say to the dagger, I need to get you back. We, we need to hold the line. I need to hold the line at home. Yes. You... We'll take her home, not to the hospital. You feel like you can treat her? She's got some kind of head trauma. I've got some first aid kits at home. Uh, I'll I'll ring the ambulance from home. We'll get there and then I'll ring the ambulance. That's what you do. Oh, you bring her home. Your home is still there. Nothing is different. From here, you see the city off in the distance and... Well... You'll be safe here. Yes, I get her inside. I set the alarm system on. I have a security system. Of course I have a security system. This place needs it. And and then I'll attempt trying to ring the ambulance. You ring the ambulance. Mr. Coleman, the attack on you, it, it ended. For now. But the memories, they, they come back to you. Those times you woke up with blood. Those times that you didn't remember what had happened. You know what you did. You were doing your duty. You were destroying those that were coming for the artifact. And you will continue to do that. And they will continue coming for you. They know who you are now. Before, you had the upper hand. But now, they knew where Elizabeth was, where she lived. They will know about this place as well. Mr. Coleman, this will keep on happening. Until you have killed every last one of them, or they kill you. And you have a choice... And this is a very important choice to make, Mr. Coleman. They clearly want you to turn it off. You know that your duty is to keep it on. You look to Elizabeth and you see that you could have a life. You could have a future with a family, maybe even kids someday. But you have to choose. You cannot have both. I'll make sure she's comfortable. Waiting for the ambulance, I go downstairs to my collection. I place the dagger where it needs to be. I pace back and forth. I do remember these things, these forces. They want to destroy this. They want to take it. I, I can't. I... I'll do a ritual. A small... A larger one this time. I used a lot of the blood that I had on my coat and clothes. I 
wring it out and I pour it in a circle and I'll add a bit more blood of my own, of the dagger. I need its guidance. How can I stop them? How can I stop them? There must be a way. What is it? I'll do it. I need to keep it on. It's important. Oh, that's easy. You just need to kill every last single one of them. You just need to continue fighting. They will come and attack you, and you will kill them every time. You will always win. I will, won't I? I have people and money, too. But I can't. Elizabeth needs to be okay. This is my duty. It's needed. I, I think about the future and the things I need to do with this money to do good in this world, and I can't do that if... If... <laughs> it might be futile, but I, I beseech the dagger. What is it I'm keeping on? What is it? You are saving the world. You are protecting it. You're keeping everyone safe. You won't really be able to keep all this. You understand that. If you continue down this path, all that will remain is the fight. It's a fight for good, it feels like. It will, of course, involve killing a lot of people. All these things, these, this money, these resources, this collection, you will not be able to keep that. They will come for it eventually. They will be able to destroy that. They will not be able to destroy you as long as you continue fighting. But everything else, you have to forget about that if you want to go down this path. If you want to keep things, if you want to keep other people, then you have to give it up. But what do you want to do? Do you want to save the world, or do you want to save yourself? I need to protect things. Maybe I will lose everything, but I can always maybe get the items back. I, I Again, it won't be forever, right? I just need to do this, and I need to do it alone. Whatever happens next, I'll have to cut off ties with Elizabeth. Maybe even if Dr. Christensen rings, I'll have to be aloof. I'm going to need to do what the dagger wants. It's my... I... Well, it's my heritage. My inheritance. I must do it, because... Otherwise, well, it was all for nothing. I suppose that's the fate that awaits me. I must keep the dagger safe. Surely, if I don't, something terrible will happen. Yes, you do have this strong feeling that something very, very bad will happen if you stop protecting it, if you stop fulfilling your duty. Something bad will happen. We go back to Dr. Christensen. You have realized these things that you realized. What are you going to do now? Are you going to go for your daughter? Or... What will you do? I... will try. I will replicate whatever we did that day that made it go like that. Coleman was with me, and I do believe he is the key to help help us get back there to that place in the forest where I saw her. And so I'll I'll get the Kayax. I'll get the life jackets. I'll get cameras, all the equipment I could need. I still don't care about that guy, Huntsman, the one that did ruin it for me. That's unimportant. Revenge is unimportant. What matters is the science, the project, the process of it. 
and so for the most part I I try and move on with this and I'll try again and again to contact Coleman even though he's strangely unavailable going deep into something I don't understand Will you pick up when Dr. Christensen calls Mr. Coleman? He does seem rather persistent. After a few calls, as I come back upstairs, uh, maybe it's the next day, maybe it's the same night, I don't really know, it's all blurring together, but I eventually will answer. He picks up, Dr. Christensen. Coleman? Coleman, is, is that you? Yes, this is Coleman. Dr. Christensen, good evening, morning. I have I've been trying to reach you for some time. Sorry, I've been busy. Uh, last night was madness. Yes, I'm I'm sorry. I I I pulled you into a lot of things that more than you you'd asked for. Uh, and and as far as any if you would see it as debt, I would not because I just did my job is is concerned. Uh, that that would be absolutely repaid in full and and more. Uh, I, I just felt that we uh, we'd found a a common interest here, and uh, uh, I have I have some ideas uh, that I'd like to try. I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to work out, Doctor Christensen. I N- no no. Listen, I, uh, I I know things are th- that you're. You're dealing with things that are out of the ordinary, uh, or what? What other people that they don't understand? I, I, I'm open to that. I, I want to e- explore that avenue. You, you see, it, 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 it didn't go completely as planned. Um, the up, the up surgery, uh, and now I'm thinking that if we could just go back. Perhaps to that place in the in the forest. Uh, you see, I, I found something there—a uh, a piece of, of cloth that that uh, couldn't have come from anyone else but but my own daughter's. Uh, something she wore on that day, and well, I, I'm I'm thinking that if, if there is anything I I perhaps could could help you with, uh, with, with things that that other people don't necessarily understand, then maybe it's not it's not that, Doctor. It's Doctor, you're a doctor. You're, you've got a family. You, if you go down that route, you you could lose them. Okay, I'll 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 put, I'll put it plainly. You could lose them all. It's not safe. No, what 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 you don't see is that if I don't, it's it's the other way around. You see, if it's if I don't go down that route, that I will lose them. I, I, I Caden's heart is. is Still gonna give out. And I, I, I need to try this. I need. I'm. I'm going to try this with or without you. But I. I think you are the key uh, to, to helping me. You, you see, you've got experience. You, you like. This is all coming, happening around you. It's never happened to me before. I, the time in the woods and and in the below. In, in the tunnels, I saw something there. I saw machines. I saw a, a creature made of uh, almost uh, a machine and and person itself. It, I and I and I believe that you will believe me when I say that. As I, I that's don't why I need know you. how I can. You, 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 I don't know how to get you back there. I and it's going to be dangerous. It's not completely true that you don't know how to get back. You could get him back there if you wanted to. You might have to join him. I will hang up quite abruptly. And I'll go downstairs and stare at the dagger. Is this something that helps? Is this something that can stop some of them? Maybe quicker than I was expecting. It can bring you there, yes. Visiting the machine, bringing the dagger to it again, you could make it stronger. Yes. Might not be so bad. 
It might help. I ring Dr. Christensen back. <clears throat> I answer a little bit too fast. Yes, yes, Coleman. You're going to be risking a lot, Doctor. But I might be able to help you. Just... This is your last chance. I get, I get it, but... Again, I... We might not make it. Well, I... To be honest, at this point, I... I, I may not have that much... To... To lose. All right. I'll meet you by the water, I suppose. And I'll go hang up then, and I'll get the knife. I'll bring <laughs> a couple of guns. All the guns we have in the house. Sure, why not? And drive there. And I guess there's some violence that I need to do. Because I'm sure if I go back there, they'll be waiting more of them. These things. These bastards. Did the ambulance come for Elizabeth in the end? I suppose they did. They did. She's at the hospital. Okay, well, she'll be there. I... Fine. I suppose I get ready and go. You do. And you find yourself standing, the two of you, by the kayaks that you've procured. You're ready to head out on the Willamette again. What do you say to each other as you stand there? I look at you quite excitedly as I am handing you over this, all of this equipment. You can see that it's all quite expensive things. Uh, there's uh, technology like cameras and uh, uh, fine brands and all uh, the uh, protective clothing and things we would need uh, all perfectly aim for for concluding these experiments probably cost me a bit what's uh, all this doctor why have you brought cameras oh this is for the scientific side of it of course i mean if we are able to replicate something then uh i, I thought it would be beneficial just to be able to maybe empirically study the exact parameters that I uh, is a don't think that's a good idea doctor um it, it probably won't even work uh, maybe they only bring a couple of cameras at uh, you want anything incriminating uh, incriminating i told you what's going to happen doctor when we go back there they're going to be waiting and i'm going to have to we're both going to have to fight Oh, yeah. Oh, them, yeah. Well, of course, I... I, I just... You're, you're sure, then, that we will be able to... Just, just get there? I think so. I'll do a little something. I don't think we'll need to row out this time. Oh. And I look then... to the woods, and I take out the metal dagger, and I will lightly prick my finger, begin to draw something on the ground, and maybe this time we can just find our way back there without having to drown. Maybe. Let's see. Well, it is in the water. The Willamette will take you there. You can get in the kayak, or you can get in the water below the surface. Either way, we'll get you there. Which one do you prefer? I think I'd prefer the kayak. So I'll nod to myself as I quickly suck my thumb and say, Okay, let's take the boat. Just, I'd, I'd argue you want to not carry too much with you. And at that point, I brandish my gun and I holster it in a holster I brought with me. And I just st stare at you for a second as I see you have the, the gun with you instead. And I... Of course, of course. I, I feel like such a fool. What was I doing? Spending money and all this. This, Of course, there are... To reach there, you need more... Less 
scientific ways, even though maybe that can come secondary, because after all, there is an objective to this. Yes, um, yes, of course. Um, not even use the bones, he says. The, all right. Good, fine. Then that's that's how we do it. And I, I just turn the cameras off and put them away for now. Uh, to see if I can, uh, yeah, let's let's try and do this then. Try and replicate this. You get in the kayaks and you find yourself paddling down the Willamette, Douglas firs on both sides of the river. Silence, just the two of you there. The fog begins to roll in. Do you say something to each other before it happens? So, we'll be there again soon, Doctor, and you're going to... I don't understand how, but you're going to find something there that helps you. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay, well, whatever it is, be quick. They'll be there, I know they will, and uh, they're going to try and... You see, it's... it's, it's the, 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 the I don't know what it is. Uh, it's just the, the thing, the, the thing that needs to stay on. They want to turn off. I think they've always wanted that, but I've been able to keep them away. But something, I don't know what. Maybe it's all this unrest brought them here. That's who they are, these people, and they want to destroy it. They want to destroy things that, important things, you see, and, and I'm the only one who can stop them. Well, I guess I'm not the only one, but... For now, I am. All right. And the fog rolls in. And this time, you don't find yourself capsizing. No, you arrive on that shoreline. There's no storm this time. The forest is silent. Oak trees. The stars above you are moving unpredictably. Back and forth as though they were ants crawling on a tent canvas viewed from within. This place is different from where you came from, but it's connected, straddling two incompatible worlds, a borderland. The metal structure awaits ahead of you, reaching far up into the sky and seemingly beyond the ant stars above. All is dead around it, and no vegetation grows beyond it, like a border is drawn between the wild forest and the nothingness. The thick metal door remains open, Mr. Coleman. But for you, Dr. Christensen, the structure itself holds little interest. It is the forest close to it, where you saw her, where you saw her scamper off. That's where you need to go. Mr. Coleman, the structure, the machine, that is what's waiting for you. That's where you need to be. You can make it stronger if you want. If I did that, maybe I could get this done, sorted. I, 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 again, part of me had, well, the dagger had told me I'd have to kill them all, and how long would that take, and how much blood would be spilled, and how much of my life would I lose, but now I'm here again. Maybe, maybe this can just, maybe if I make it stronger, then I, they, they won't be able to turn it off. And then, and then I can still have some sort of life. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to expect much, but maybe something. Maybe? I start heading to it, and I say to the doctor, huh, I wasn't actually planning to come back here. Don't go too far, Doc, but I'll be in the... I'll be in the building. I'll come back when I've found what I'm looking for. And I nod. Mr. Coleman, we go to you then, as you are moving inside the metal structure. It smells of metal and oil inside. The humming, vibrating sound is there, and you're walking on what seems to be metal grates. The sounds of your steps on the metal echo. The room again begins to hum, and the knife with it. There is a slot for it here. This is what controls it. You can amplify it, or you can turn it off. Mr. Coleman, this is your last 
chance to make a choice. This choice will be what determines the rest of your life. Will you amplify it, or will you turn it off? I kneel. I take the dagger out. I beseech it. This will help you, right? If I make you stronger, does that get rid of them? Does that kill them? We will kill more of them, faster, more efficiently. It is a good thing. We will kill, we will kill, we will kill. We will kill for as long as you live, and for as long as your children live, or whoever takes the dagger after you. The killing will continue indefinitely. This war will never end. But surely they can't last forever. Who... Why do they want this? Who are they? We are fighting the ocean. We are fighting the earth. This is not a war that can ever end. That's the whole point. The war itself is the point. Through it, we will keep everyone safe. What happens if they win? Earth... Water? It's not... doesn't sound evil. It is all a matter of... perspective. Know that... the place that you know... will not fare too well... if it wins. I think about this for a long time. Who knows how long I'm down there. But... maybe it's right... Is this the world fighting back somehow? But we need to survive. Our world needs to survive. It's a good world, not a perfect world, but it... I can't give up on what I sworn to do. I pause just for one last moment. My father, my grandfather, were they already fighting this war? They were. Not as much as you will be, though. They managed to stay hidden. You have been found, but don't worry about that. We can fight bigger battles now. Kill more. Together. And I sigh. Perhaps I even weep a little. As I put the dagger where it needs to go, I secretly pray that Maybe one day, my children, or my children's children, God knows how I'll even have those, it occurs to me, but maybe one day they could be free from this. It can't go on forever. I'll find a way. There'll be a way. There'll be a way to win and protect what needs to be protected. I'll find it. One day. Surely. Yes. Which way do you turn it? The way that amplifies the signal. As you get outside of the structure, the watchers, they're all stood outside. The machine hums loudly and proudly, and the dark sky is lit up by a brilliant light. Trees close to it catch fire, and the forest begins to burn. The wheezing sound of the wood burning becomes like a scream as the dead zone around the machine expands. The watchers await behind you. And you will continue the war, leading it. Dr. Christensen, in an opening in the forest, you see her. You found her, quickly. You knew where she was, you could feel it. A father knows these kinds of things. There she is. She's dirty, and she's naked, but seemingly at play with some kind of animal. It's... it's a young baboon. She spots you. What do you do? I... Put my hands up just to signal a non-threatening behavior just in front of me. No, Caden. Uh, she she begins moving away. No, no, go go away. You you you're the man from my nightmares. You will not make me go there. I won't. I won't go. I won't go. L- look, come. She begins calm running. Down. Calm down. What do you do, Cadence? I'm I'm your father. I'm I start running after her. Cadence, I'm your, I'm your dad. The baboon jumps up in a tree and, and looks quizzically at you as you race after her. What are you going to do here? You have a sedative with you. You 
could try to catch her and try to try to somehow convince her what are you gonna do yeah maybe that's the way I she won't understand it's been it's been too long uh she's seen me in her nightmares cadence those no not that's not real you were left here long ago in the in the in the forest someone else took your place dr Christensen you realize after a while that you are going to have to subdue her if you're going to bring her with you. Or you can let her go. With everything that that has as a consequence. Which one will you choose? I, I will capture her. I will I will get her. I will hold her. I will talk to her. And, and if she won't calm down, I, I then I... Yes, I, I'll have to sedate her. I, I can do that for now. And, and put her in a place... Where, where she'll feel safe and, and can speak and get washed up and dressed and, and everything will be a, a safer place for her. She's scared in, in the forest, of course. Yes. Dr. Christensen, this does not go easily. This, She screams, she fights, she scratches you. You're forced to sedate her since you have chosen to bring her with you. And you do that. And you're carrying her. And Mr. Coleman takes you back. And you're back home. And you're in your lab. And your wife has not seen this. How How could she see this? It's. It would be very difficult to explain. This is your choice. There is your cadence, the cadence that you raised. She is about to die. But is she your daughter, though? What what does being someone's daughter even mean? Is it is it blood? Is it time together? Is it is it love? You can save your cadence. Or you can let her die and try to raise the cadence from the forest. She might, after all, be your real daughter, the other one being but a copy. But you don't share any memories with the cadence from the forest. She was so young when she disappeared during that camping trip. What are you going to do? You have brought her with you. She said. She's seen me in her nightmares. I... That place... That strange place. How could it be that there are... There are two of them. How could this be? I... Try and treat her well. At, like... She's dirty and naked. and I, I can't allow that to be. But as I kind of wrap her up in something. I Just look. Is it... Is it really her? Are they identical? The only difference is that one of them has a hole in their heart and will die. The other one is healthy and strong. Aside from that, physically they are exactly the same. And you think your cadence, you could make her healthy and strong. You just need the heart. You just need to take the heart. It's a life for a life. It's just like me choosing one surgery over the other at the hospital. Not everyone can be saved. and In the end, it all comes down to what life they have left to live. And the people around them she, this one, this one from the forest, she, she had no one around her. Not really. Only these violent men, they would attack us. They, well, she would eventually become one of them. She will never trust me. She will never forgive me or allow me to be her father. And why 
would I? If it's not truly her. It'll have to be. Her. And I start running tests and diagnoses, making sure that the blood type matches and everything else lines up so that it would actually work. Will you conduct the surgery then? Taking the heart from the cadence you brought back from the forest and giving that to your cadence, the one you raised? This is not cadence. This is not... Not even... Almost not even real. And yet I made it real. I've made this happen. And no one... No one can ever know how. No, they can't. If the tests all line up. If the heart... If the heart proves compatible and healthy... Then yes. I will do this surgery. Yes. And and it is compatible, of course. Because the cadence from the forest you realize is... Your daughter is the one that your wife gave birth to. She did not have a fault with her heart when she was born. That was the one that came back from the forest after having disappeared. That was the one that was given to you instead. The one that you raised, and that is, for all intents and purposes, your cadence. So, just so we're clear, that is the choice that you make to save the one that you raised, the one who you have memories with, and the one that, I guess, you love? Yes. That is the one that must live. Mr. Coleman. We move now to an epilogue. You are in the safe house, drying the blood off the knife. The watchers are outside. This will be safe for now until they find you again. You put your head on the pillow and and visions of making love to Elizabeth flicker by. She can never be part of this life. You wonder sometimes if you can live this life. But you have made your choice. You are continuing the family legacy, upholding the promise that your family made. You sacrifice so much everything but in return powers that should not be allowed to run amok are kept in line the world burns outside your window though but that fire is fueled by human hatred and anger human love and compassion can put it out when the time is right Daniel this will be the rest of your life how do you feel about that and what are your final words I suppose I look at this horrible place I'm now in. Do I even know who these watchers are? Why do they help me? Who are they? You just know that they want exactly the same that you want. They seem to be connected to this machine. They, too, protect it. They are your tools. They serve you. What will happen to the house? That was important as well. It wasn't just the dagger. The house was an important place as well. How can I protect it if I'm not there? The house is not safe anymore. They know where it is. You need to keep on the move. All my money. All the connections. What is this life for me now? Is it just going to be moving from place to place and killing and moving from place to place? No, I, I can't accept that. I need to... That they can get me something, a computer or a book. I, this needs to be done quicker. I need to find a way of doing it quicker. I need to have some sort of life one day. I have to find a way of finding them. That's what I'll do. I'll, the, they they want to hunt me. We'll hunt them. There must be a place they live, a place they exist, and we'll kill them all. And then I can have a life. I can't just be on the run forever. So... As the days and the months and maybe even the years pass, I will constantly be trying to find a way to win now. To win this war. Because 
the dagger would know. It's not the only important thing in the world. I need to do better. I can do good. I just need to do this. Quickly. And properly. And I think... Maybe I'll do whatever it takes to achieve that goal. Yes. That is the hope that sustains you as you fight this forever war. And you fight it so well. Dr. Christensen, you're at home with Mikkel and the kids. For once, the sun shines over Corvallis. There's peace again. Unstable and not without complication. But today is a good day. Ira is on her bike, practicing doing wheelies, and Cadence is blowing soap bubbles. Mikkel puts her head on your shoulder. We are so happy, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, we are. We're blessed. You are. Where did you bury the other Cadence's body? I... took it out. I couldn't ask Coleman to bring me back to the place again. I took the car far out into the actual into the actual woods. And there I dug a deep hole. Took me a good few hours. But then again wasn't a big body. And I buried her there in the woods as a child of the woods that she was. You did. As you were removing the heart, she briefly woke up. Just just before it ended, she was screaming. You will never forget that. You will never forget what you did to her, Germaine. What you did to your actual daughter, your flesh and blood. You will have to find a way to live with that. And this will be the rest of your life. How do you feel about that? I will never be relaxed and happy in that. I just did that because I couldn't see any other way. I... Well, the only thing I can do now is to try and give the one that survived the best life that she can get. And that probably means having to put up a facade, pretending that everything is always fine and everything is always going to be fine. As we leave Mr. Coleman and Dr. Christensen behind, we see a construction crew working to tear down a building that was damaged by the fires during the riots. It will be rebuilt in time and the country will move on. But how? Things have changed, and choices have been made that cannot be undone. The rift is so wide now that it can never be healed again, not truly. Dark clouds are on the horizon, and the worst is yet to come. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the scenario A Hole in My Heart for Cult Divinity Lost. We have created this scenario ourselves, and this series is sponsored by Helmgast. The music was made by Atrium Carceri, and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient for your gaming table. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoshobert, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Cameron, Anton, Graham Berry, and Doug Thompson for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember that death, that is only the beginning.